Hi, and welcome to our show. We're here from Safe Berks. We're a nonprofit located in Reading, and we serve survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. My name is Francine Scaboria, and I'm very honored to interview today my colleague, Christine Gilfillan, the Chief Operating Officer of Safe Berks. And I just want to first say thank you for everything you've done to build this amazing organization. And thank you. Uh, yeah, I really do appreciate it. As a, a new staff member, I would love to hear how you got started at Safe Berks, when you came, and, and why. Wow. Yeah. Well, I moved to Reading back in 1985 or 1986, and when I moved here, I had a small business called Flowers by Van Meter. Uh -huh. That was a long time ago. And I also had made some friends in the community after I moved here, and they were involved with then Burke's Women in Crisis. Yeah. So they were on a fundraising committee that used to hold events that raised funds for Burke's yeah. Women in Crisis. And they Excellent. asked me to be part of that group because I owned a business that would benefit those fundraisers by right. providing decorations and event planning ah. and so forth. So that's how I really got involved in the beginning um, with Judy Henry from Judy's on Cherry and uh -huh. Karen Baxter who was with, um, it's now Comcast, but I'm not sure what it yeah. was then. Just with a group of, uh, Susan Fromm, okay. just a group of women that I've known for 30 years who were, some of them were founding mothers yes. of the organization, yeah. but we were kind of the early fundraising committee, yeah. I guess. So that's how I got involved. And then I decided I wanted to be more involved, so I took the training. It was uh -huh. a 40-hour training then. Okay. And I would babysit for, watch help watch children at the shelter while their moms attended support groups That's wonderful. and things like yeah. that. And then um, I joined the staff in 2001. That's wonderful, so. wonderful. Yeah. And how has your position at Safe Berks evolved over the years? Um, well, we didn't have a chief operating office. Things have changed. Yeah. So we, all, we didn't have a chief operating officer. First, I was the um, director of education Okay. An outreach for 11 years, oh. and so I did prevention education and community outreach and school programming, awareness events, that sort of thing, kind of more in the realm of where you are now. Yeah. And then, I believe it was in 2012 or 2013, the, agent, the organization decided that it needed an associate director, so someone yeah. who would be able to back up the executive director at the time, right. Mary Kay and provide support for her, act on things in her absence. Yeah. Um, she had to take away, maybe take some of the responsibilities that were on her plate and put them on right. mine so that yeah. she could focus on other strategic right. things. And that's how that position was born. Yeah. And then we changed, our titles changed to the officers just yeah. a few years ago. Okay, that's wonderful. Yeah. And I know you are, so passionate about serving the survivors and has that fueled you to be able to serve many years because I know these are it's a challenging mm -hmm. position to serve you know and is does your passion for the survivors is that you know how how you keep that strength going or? I would say yeah the answer to that is yes and really a passion for addressing all kinds of injustices so in my mind, a better world would be a place where people, regardless of their gender or gender identity or um, the color of their skin, um, their legal status in this country, you know, in my view, a world that would treat people with respect and dignity, no matter what their circumstances, um, would be a better world. So for me, for women, this this used to be thought of as a women's issue happening mostly to women and girls. For me, that was just a, a normal um, place to focus my life because that's my life, the life of the women around me, 
all the women in the community. People have a right to be safe and be free from violence. And I see it going on all around me. And people say, well, how do you, how do, you do the work? And I say, well, who will do it if we don't do it? You know, right. people who are called right. to do it um, are there to do the work and to make sure that we do the best we can to make sure that people are safe. So yeah, that is what, yeah. that's what drives me every day. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I appreciate hearing that. I appreciate everything that you've done. And maybe you could tell me a little bit about the evolution of Burke's Women in Crisis becoming Safe Burke's, which the name change, I guess, is a little over a year ago. Mm -hmm. Well, we have always served all survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. So we have served male survivors as well. However, we knew, we've known for quite a while that the name was probably holding us back somewhat. Yeah. And it also, I think, gave people the opportunity sometimes, I would be in front of audiences talking about domestic violence and sexual assault, and rather than getting, I would get questions like, well, what about the men? Or, you know, yeah. aren't men ever abused? And I would say, yes, of course, we provide services for males as well. And men are abused sometimes. But sometimes it would sort of take the focus away from what we were really talking about. I think the fact that we've made it more clear that we've that our name is now, and by the way, this is a trend across the state and across the country. There are a lot of organizations that started off the way we did with names similar to ours that are now changing their names to be more broad or more inclusive. I think that's part of the evolution. Yeah. So it's not just us, yeah. it's happening all over the place. And I think it was inevitable that it happen and it probably puts some of those concerns or some of those questions to rest yeah. before you even get started. Yeah. So if, if we can keep focused yeah. on the idea that everybody deserves to be safe in their relationship, um, I think that it's, it's a positive, it's been a positive yeah. thing. The time had come and it was yeah. a positive thing yeah. for us. That's wonderful. And um, one thing, I know we were talking about this earlier that um, Burke's Women in Crisis was founded in 1976, and I believe that was part of really a, a movement across the country um, against mm -hmm. violence. Um, and I just learned in my training the other day that I guess it was 1971 that the first shelters for people fleeing domestic violence in, were opened in um, Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering, you know, maybe your thoughts on, on that movement in the 70s. And uh, was that really something that, I guess, swept the nation? And, and I, you know, look back and I'm thinking, thank God that happened. And it seems kind of late, but better in the 70s than, than not. But, right, yeah. right. Well, it all, I think it all came to the forefront at the same time that the women's movement yeah. was gaining more traction and more steam. And it's not just the movement to end domestic violence. It happened, as you described it, early in the 70s through early in the 80s. Most of the programs were formed, the state coalitions. Pennsylvania was a pioneer state in, that, in those terms. But the rape and the rape crisis movement, so we're also rape crisis center, that movement largely paralleled the domestic violence movement. So um, women organized against rape in Philadelphia started around the same time. Grassroots movements, women helping women, women and men, but you know, yeah. mostly women helping women, yeah. um, all happening around the same time. So it wasn't that long ago. Sometimes it seems like a long time ago, but right. in, the, in the whole continuum, it wasn't that long ago. Right. Right. We haven't been here for that long. Yeah, it, it is a fascinating and in, um, just learning more about Safe Burks, um, you had mentioned the founding mothers. Could you just mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about uh, the beginnings of, of Burks Women in Crisis and the founding mothers? Well, I'll be honest with you, I yeah. didn't live here right. in the 70s. I didn't right. live in Burks County, but I, did know, I do know several of the founding yeah. mothers. So Judy Henry from Judy's on Cherry, um, Judge Ludgate. Yes. Um, wonderful. Louise Grimm, um, Barbara Hart, who now lives in Maine. I know that at our 30th, an I was there at our 30th anniversary when we brought them back and honored yeah. them and with the Voices yeah. for Change Award. So this was the visionary group of women who literally sat around someone's 
kitchen table or sat around a table at the YW when we used to have a YW and recognized a need and also formed helped to form a, net, a hotline and a network of safe homes. We call our shelter the safe house, but the original safe houses were people in the community who took people, took families in when they weren't safe prior to the opening of our shelter in 1980 or 1981. So it's a rich history. Um, the more we can do to put it out there, I think engages people and brings, brings them in. I saw a sign from the Women's March last weekend, a young woman who said, I march today because people marched decades before me to make this something like that. It's not what the sign yeah. said, but you know what I mean. It's, it's about the people who organized and formed these organizations in the 70s that, um, that makes things possible that are possible today. What a sad state of affairs that, you know, we feel like we're taking a few steps back right now, but well, we'll keep going. <laughs> keep that's on. right. And I love what you just were saying about these founding mothers. And I find this so incredible that what courage to use their own homes to break make the other, pe make people safe who were fleeing domestic violence. I mean, we are blessed right now that we have a wonderful secure building. We are. Which uh, shelters people who are fleeing violence. But the people who started this, they used their own houses and their own phones, I guess, until they... Their own yeah. big rotary dial phones. Yeah. 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 And maybe their they cars, did. you know, their money. They, they used they did. their own resources. That's right. We yeah. had very... I remember back in the early days when I first took my training, you know, it was a struggle to buy food for the shelter. Yeah. I just remember when it was much different from the way it is now. So one of the things you can say about the organization and about organizations like it is that we've come a long way over all yeah. of these years. And fortunately, the government has also recognized by creating funding streams and taking on some of that responsibility that you know these are services that need to be funded. And the other, you know, the other asset we have is the community yes, that we live yeah. in that's just incredibly generous and right makes it possible for us to keep, you know, keep expanding yeah. and keep growing and yeah. keep looking at the different needs that we can meet for people. Because donors have come forward, whether it's $5 or up to very large amounts, That's right. contributing what they could to try to help Safe Burks maintain and to grow. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It is amazing. Um, so I just want to thank you for, for joining our show. I want to thank you for, for everything that you've done over these years and I look forward thank to uh, working with you to build um, an even uh, safer Burks. Thank you. Thanks future. for having me. Yeah. For more information about Safe Burks, check out our website at www.saferks.org.